The enigmatic and icy continent of Antarctica is essentially a huge island at the bottom of the planet. Antarctica's weird realities are wilder than fiction. Excellent scientific insights can be obtained from Antarctica. A further surprise is the little-known perils of Antarctica that might potentially kill you. Several people have worked hard to learn some of Antarctica's greatest secrets, and the continent has been the focus of extensive exploration. Over the years, one such figure has undoubtedly been Joe Rogan, the host of the world's most well-known podcast. Many scientists and adventurers who have discussed some of the lesser-known secrets of this region have appeared on his podcast. What are the strangest and most startling facts about Antarctica that Joe Rogan has revealed? Let's find out. Although the world's population may have Antarctica permanently imprinted, or may we say frozen, in their memories, as the legendary island continent of penguins, the continent of ice was only very recently discovered. Throughout ancient times, people have conjured up the idea of Antarctica as a frictious location they dubbed Terra Australis, which is Latin for southern land. But the first known human sighting of the continent was during a Russian voyage in 1820. A wide range of people, from sealers to geographers, were interested in the polar scenery. The first recorded human footstep on Antarctica was made in 1821 by American sealer John Davis, who travelled from his home in New Haven, Connecticut, to Hughes Bay, Antarctica, and came ashore there. This was one of the major turning points in the gradual discovery of Antarctica. Another significant event occurred in 1899 when Karsten Borschgravink and his crew sailed in the Southern Cross to Cape Adair to overwinter there for the first time ever as humans. The magnetic South Pole was attained by 1909 and the geographic South Pole by 1911. One may understandably assume that a trip to Antarctica would entail aimless roaming around the frozen landscape without much care, clad only in an insulated suit reminiscent of space exploration equipment. Yet if you don't take enough precautions to stay out of Antarctica's bad neighbourhoods, you could lose your life by falling hundreds of feet while on level land. Huge crevices that are several hundred feet deep rip into the continent, many of which are invisible until you take a step into the chasm. A genuine hazard results when you combine glare with featureless ice. In Antarctica, where the deceptively featureless icy landscape can hide the catastrophic weakness in the terrain, the Earth actually could swallow you up. A crevice swallowed up an Antarctic research vehicle in 1965, killing all of the crew who were inside. On October 14th of that year, an expedition commanded by John Ross, Jeremy Bailey, David Wilde and John Wilson, who went in a muskeg tractor, were getting close to the East Antarctic Halley Research Station when a crevice suddenly formed. The vehicle's cab was broken after a 100-foot drop. Ross was spared the tragic occurrence since he was not in the cab. The cab was crushed in the fall, but Bailey, who was seriously hurt, managed to stay alive long enough to shout to Ross, who let him know that Wilde and Wilson were dead before he too passed away. More than 10 years have passed since Joe Rogan started his podcast. He and his guests have developed quite a few outlandish beliefs and disputes throughout that time. Because of this, you don't often see Joe really shocked, but in 2022 he experienced a startling revelation that left him speechless. In an episode of his Joe Rogan Experience podcast from August 22, Joe invited Sam Tripoli to discuss the history of Operation High Jump, a military drill in Antarctica that featured President Harry Truman during the 20th century. The United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program was the official name of the military initiative, which was put into motion between 1946 and 1947 under the direction of Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. Task Force 68, also known as Operation High Jump, is a fully legitimate military operation that has been extensively documented for the training and testing of military troops and equipment in Antarctica. Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd oversaw a group of 4,000 troops as they launched a benign assault on the icy continent. A communications ship, two supply ships, two icebreakers, two seaplane tenders, a type of small aircraft carrier, 
two tankers, two destroyers, an aircraft carrier, and a submarine containing Task Force 68, the fleet assigned to the task. The Mount Olympus, the Task Force communication ship, was particularly equipped with 50 radio operators and served as its flagship. Those unfortunate penguins had no chance. It was not the intention of those 13 ships and over 5,000 men to travel to Antarctica and lecture the penguins and seals. Instead, the vast force was intended to achieve what could be divided into three broad objectives. To train personnel and equipment under Antarctic conditions, to consolidate and expand American claims in the Antarctic, while scouting potential locations for American bases and developing methods for their establishment and maintenance, and lastly, to advance scientific understanding of the continent. It was obvious that this was a military expedition in Antarctica. The Pentagon understood that a conflict with the USSR would necessitate polar fighting and that it would be terrifying, to put it mildly. The Pentagon also wanted to maintain its public profile. The United States military ensured it would firmly remain within the public's field of vision by launching a mission of such magnificent grandeur. Operation High Jump, like other government initiatives, is the subject of several conspiracy theories that claim it had ties to the Nazis and alien technologies. Sam Tripoli mainly discussed the more entertaining aspects of the operation, and when he started to explain some theories, Joe Rogan was taken aback. The missing 411 theory was one of the theories Tripoli brought up. According to this theory, a number of people have gone missing and have been associated with similar traits, many of whom are intelligent and of German descent. Sam, on the other hand, informs Joe that in accordance with notebooks kept by Admiral Byrd, a Navy commander had spoken with a Nazi unidentified flying object, UFO. Sam revealed that the Nazis had essentially agreed to deploy extraterrestrial technology during World War II. However, it's unclear as to why this was never employed in the real struggle or why aliens remained in Antarctica after the fighting was over. Nonetheless, according to Sam, the president was eventually informed by Operation High Jump's senior brass that they had to accept the aliens and strike a deal with them. The president complied, making a deal with the aliens and permitting them to use humans as test subjects. The World's Oldest Pyramids when you hear about pyramids, thoughts of Egypt probably immediately come to mind. The pyramids of Giza are the most well-known pyramids in the entire world and exhibit incredible ingenuity and originality. The oldest structures in the world today, however, are not the Egyptian pyramids. Pyramids that have been found in Antarctica hold that distinction. In 2016, satellites circling the Antarctic region noticed a peculiar formation that seemed to be looking out from the ice. The existence of man-made pyramids in Antarctica, at the very least, serves to support the theory that people lived in this region before we knew anything about them. Some researchers even contend that the existence of these pyramids demonstrates the existence of a sophisticated human civilization in this area. But as of right now, it is impossible to collect much proof because that region is essentially unreachable. Although it seems unlikely that a civilization could have existed in such a harsh and inhospitable environment as Antarctica, a group of geologists from the German Alfred Wagner Institute for Arctic Marine Research visited Antarctica in 2017 and took core samples from the frozen sea floor there. They set out to determine what the climate of the continent would have been like in the past and what they discovered was pretty intriguing. In essence, the geological team is speculating that despite the possibility that there isn't much life in Antarctica now, this wasn't always the case. A meteorite strike did not destroy Antarctica. Since ice dominates Antarctica, it has a very unusual environment, making the continent's frozen wastelands the world's most popular location for searching for extraterrestrial objects. Not small green men, but meteorites. One of the biggest predictors of extinction in the known cosmos is meteorites. Every time a meteorite strikes a planet or surface, disaster is almost certain. Just take a moment to recall the dinosaurs. Those creatures were probably alone in their prehistoric utopia when all of a sudden, a meteorite struck, forcing the planet to essentially restart. 
90% of all meteorite finds worldwide have been made in Antarctica, which is astounding. As the ice is pushed up against the Transantarctic mountains and erodes, a fascinating phenomenon unlike anything else on Earth, the continent's ice and glacial activity capture conceals in quantity as clockwork. Among the meteorites found in the Antarctic, certain extraordinary examples stand out for their size and the tales they can impart. The largest extraterrestrial stone found thus far was two feet by two feet by a foot and a half, and it included complex mineral salts that were left over from evaporation processes. Chondritic meteorites from Antarctica hold the key to understanding the characteristics of the early solar system, since pre-Earth water has been preserved in the meteorites' hydrous mineral crystals. The meteorites collected are also in excellent condition and for examining due to the cold climate of Antarctica and the absence of flora or eroding sands. It's interesting to note that there may have been an even greater meteorite strike in Antarctica, one that may have occurred before the demise of the dinosaurs and that, according to some sources including Joe Rogan, may have been considerably worse. Recently, Joe invited content producer and author Ben Van Kirkwick and YouTube famous independent researcher Jimmy Corsetti to appear on his podcast. The three guys talked at length about early humanity and their capacity to endure extinction-level events. According to accounts, a collaborative effort between NASA and the German Aerospace Center in 2006 led to the discovery of this meteorite crater. This mission's goal was to attempt to measure patterns in the Earth's gravitational field, which would ultimately reveal the distribution of mass on the globe and variations in the metric through time. According to scientists, the meteorite that had to have created such a large crater could have undoubtedly caused a worldwide extinction-level event. It is thought that the collision made the planet extremely unfriendly to all forms of life by causing a significant amount of dust to rise into the atmosphere. Only a few prehistoric shellfish must have survived the fallout after months of darkness and caustic acid rain rendered the Earth inhospitable. The dinosaurs who later evolved into the planet's dominant species over the following 200 million years, before another asteroid struck and wiped them out as well, would have descended from the mussels themselves. Without a doubt, Antarctica is a hub of mystery and has had its fair share of conspiracies over time. A large staircase, bizarre buildings, alien spacecraft, and peculiar constructions like elongated skulls and unusual pyramids have pushed the belief that Antarctica once supported extraterrestrial life, or still does. Each year, there are numerous reports of UFO sightings and Google Earth has captured some strange activity that is believed to be the work of extraterrestrials. Why would an alien civilization visiting Earth pick Antarctica above any other location? Experts say that just because Antarctica has become so inhospitable to humans due to its extreme cold doesn't mean that other living forms won't be able to survive there. It's feasible that an alien culture interested in visiting our planet might feel more at home in Antarctica than anywhere else. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.